Though for those of you who are as big on Formula 1 as I am, you'll probably know the story about Kevin Magnussen. His father, Jan Magnussen. Jan Magnussen broke onto the international motorsport scene in 1994 by beating Ayrton Senna's record for most wins in a British F3 season. After proving himself useful in a variety of touring cars, posting modest results in Champ Car, and making his F1 debut in 1995 subbing for Mika Hakkinen at McLaren, Magnussen would eventually hitch a ride with the Stewart F1 team for the 1997 season. Three-time world champion Sir Jackie Stewart touted Magnussen to be the most talented young driver since Ayrton Senna. I mean, hey, who's gonna question the word of Sir Jackie now, but as I'm sure some of you know, his Formula 1 career ended up plummeting to the ground faster than Telltale Games. To this day you'd have to regard him as a flop in terms of up and coming talent who was seemingly destined for Formula 1, but since then none have been as prolific as Red Bull's latest casualty. So let's find out what the fuck happened to Dan Tictum. Let's begin the video by delving into Tictum's racing career. Born in London, Tictum started karting at the age of 8 and would win a slew of championships in his time in the category. The British F FKS Championship, the National ABKC Super 1 Championship, the British Open Championship, and the British Grand Prix Championship. Moving on to the international stage, competing in the WSK Euro Series and the WSK Master Series, he would be the highest placed rookie. He would be the vice champion of the CIK FIA European Championship and the National Super 1 Championship. He would win the KFJ Andrea Marguti Trophy, joining such elite as Giancarlo Fisichella, Robert Kubica, and Daniel Kvyat. Vice champion of the WSK Master the following year and would break the lap record of the Brands Hatch Indy course in his first ever Formula 4 test. <sighs> Alright, now we've got karting out of the way, let's get into the car racing side of his career, because this is where it starts to get rocky. In 2015, Tickton would make his car racing debut for Ford Tech Motorsport in the British Formula 4 Championship. Good team, relatively easy field, easy pickings then, right? Eh, well, sort of. Tickton led the initial stage of the championship, but would eventually lose ground, and certainly wasn't helped when he was disqualified from the Croft round for cannoning into Lando Norris. Oh yeah, something I should mention here, relatively easy field? Yeah, kind Kinda not. Lando Norris, Ricky Collard, Matthias Leist, Inem Ahmed, Colson Herder, Toby Sowery, James Paul, Sinan Fielding. Yeah, 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 this was not an easy field, wasn't it? But hey, gives more merit to his wins, right? Maybe so, but it doesn't look good if you try and pull something stupid. And that's exactly what he did. At the second to last race of the season, Tictum, disgruntled by what looked for all money to be a racing incident, sailed past multiple cars under safety car and deliberately punted Collard. Okay, now I've got to stop the tongue-in-cheek right here because this incident should have been a major red flag. Look, you may be the hottest thing going around talent-wise, but it all amounts to nothing if you just piss it away to satisfy your ego. It may be a mistake by his reckoning, but the problem is no one really has forgotten it. Following this, the MSA would impose a two-year ban on the kid, the second year of which was suspended for 12 months on the condition there were no further offences. I'm not sure how you can re-offend if you're banned. Put an ankle bracelet on him or some shit? I, I, I don't know. Anyway, Anyway, he wouldn't reoffend and would return in the arse end of the following year. His 2016 campaign consisted of one round in the European Formula 3 Championship where he wouldn't do so hot, the British F3 Autumn Trophy where he lost out to Enam Ahmed, Joey Mawson and Callan O'Keefe, and a campaign at Macau with Double R Racing. Qualifying wasn't too bad, just behind teammate Alexander Sims, and actually he would actually beat Sims in the qualifying race. But his main race ended down at Lisboa, miserable end to the year, although as Sophia Flourish proved, it can go a lot worse at that corner. But anyway, 2017 would prove to be a new beginning for Tictum. He would be brought back onto the Red Bull Junior team, would race with Formula Renault Euro Cup Series. I mean, yeah, he had one win from 23 starts, but still, I mean, Arden isn't exactly known for being the best team on the grid. One also has to remember that the talent pool in that championship was fierce. He would finish 7th, in amongst some good company, and in a car nailed together by Turnip Farmers and Banbury. Not too bad. A brief GP3 campaign with Dams would muster fruit with a podium at Abu Dhabi, but the crowning jewel of the season came down to a race where until the last 100 meters, he was never going to win. They're side by side coming to the last corner. Habsburg's got him! Habsburg's got him! And camera hits the wall! So too does Habsburg! And Daniel Tictum wins the Macau Grand Prix! What a finish! And just like that, Redemption. I mean, just think, he regains his Red Bull backing, becoming a full-fledged member of the junior team while he's at it, he's putting together a decent array of results, and he wins the Macau Grand Prix, all after a period of 
uncertainty surrounding him. To be honest, I was kinda hopeful, because although I viewed his shunt in 2015 the same way most people view Harvey Weinstein as a person, this kid had talent. You can love him or hate him, but he has the talent to match his trenchant mouth. 2018 would see this cat drive for Motor Park in the European Formula 3 Championship. A full season campaign with a decent team, half decent teammates, Austrian bull seaman backing, and a wave of momentum off the back of winning the world's most farcical Grand Prix. Tictum knew how to make the Delara F3 work, and it showed. He was proving himself useful in the first half of the championship, leading the championship over the likes of Robert Schwartzman, Marcus Armstrong, Mick Schumacher, Yuri Vips, blah 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 blah. This was a stacked grid, full of great potential. And there he is, leading it. That was until the spawn of Mikhail Schumacher's loins hit form in the second half of the season, reeling in the young Brit, and would eventually overtake him in the standings. Tictum didn't necessarily perform badly during this time, but the progress made by Schumacher, Schwarzman, and Prema during the second half of the season would ultimately prove to be killer. But that said, given the sudden upturn of pace, there was a little bit of reason to be a little bit curious as to why this was happening. But I mean, hey, you'd have to be pretty stupid to actually publicly, you know, suggest cheating, eh? <laughs> right. Right? Yeah, well, guess what? Guess what Dan did? He, he, he did, yeah. Danny Boy did question this, which was interpreted as an accusation of cheating. Looking back in the comments, he may not have been outright accusing them, but it doesn't look good in the eye of the average earthling now, doesn't it? Along with appearances in both Formula 2 and Super Formula, both where he performed pretty decently, it was back to the facade of a Grand Prix in Macau. This time, it was straight up domination. Like, all blacks at the 2015 Rugby World Cup domination. Or... The, the the other type of domination. Pole position, qualifying race win, and feature race win, with faster slaps in both races. You can't get much better than that. And if Macau really is worth a damn, then you've got to stand up and take notice of that kind of result. Prima may have been off the pace that weekend, but you can't hold that against Danny Boy. It was stuff like this which justified Helmut Marco's faith in the kid, despite having a seemingly loose connection between his brain and mouth. I'll leave you to decide who I'm talking about here. 2019 rolled around, and the focus was about getting Danny Boy enough super license points to replace Kvyat or Gasly for the 2020 Formula 1 season. The plan was to compete in a summer series before heading back to Japan for the Super Formula season. For that summer series, there was only two choices, the Asian F3 Winter Series or the Toyota Racing Series in New Zealand. I'm biased and say that he should have competed in New Zealand, but I also say this because the numbers for TRS meant that the super license points will be gifted, whereas for the Asian F3 series, they weren't. So already, Tickton was off on the back foot in the sense that he would not be getting any super license points for that series. There were some decent cats in that series, but the talent pool was no more fierce than what TRS was. A grid like this, it theoretically should have been a cakewalk. It was anything but. Despite getting pole position for both races of the opening round in Thailand, that would really be the only thing of note he would achieve in that season. Granted, there were setbacks, but the attitude he gave off during these times was shithouse. Thing is, if you give off an attitude reminiscent of Willie T. Ribs, it's it's gonna go down well like a nice cup of sick. With the confirmation of no super license points for the championship, and with Tickton being about as happy as Andre Ether getting out on line drive, the campaign was pulled and the focus turned to the Super Formula season. Now, from my understanding, Tickton would have required around about 15 super license points to get into Formula 1 in 2020, which ultimately meant that he would have had to finish third. Benefit for him was that he had time on his side. Those F3 points that he scored last year will be applicable right until 2021. So, no sweat, right? Well, that's pretty provided that you don't believe in your own bullshit, which at this stage, Tictum seemed to. By his own admission, he struggled greatly in those four rounds that he had with Team Morgan. There were even suggestions that the team wasn't good enough. Despite all the promise, all the hype, and all the good results achieved before this, the lack of pace and polarizing personality ultimately led to being dropped from the Super Formula Drive and the Red Bull Junior Team. Tictum had just lost his Red Bull backing, leaving his career in limbo. This story is kind of a sad one, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, Tictum's personality rubbed people the wrong way. People within the team supposedly didn't like him, describing him as a bad personality, having a lack of relationship building within a team. Unfortunately, these are things you've got to harness at this level. It's a team sport after all. You can't just turn up with a helmet and expect the world to come to you. His toxicity certainly didn't translate with fans, with a lot of people viewing him as a spoiled brat. It certainly didn't help when Danny Boy went on social media going off at them. But then, you look at it from the other aspect. He was a guy that seemed 
seemingly had the talent to go all the way. And honestly, he could have. But as I mentioned at the start of this video, there were red flags throughout his entire career, which suggested that temperament often got the better of him. Again, I stress the word suggest. No one knows other than he about the true story. But whatever it was, it should have been dealt with before there was any chance for it to ruin it for him in the end. Although, it may not be the end of the road for Dan, as at this time, I bring up Alexander Albon. Albon has always been an F1 worthy talent, but was dropped after only one year of being with a junior team. Fast forward seven years, and Albon has proven the world why Marco gave him the call up. I personally hope Tectum can get his career back on track, get himself in the right headspace, rediscover his love for motorsport, and tackle the endeavour with lessons learned from the past. If he can harness the side of him that let him down, then what initially made him an F1 prospect will shine through once again. But hey, what do you guys think? Drop a comment down below what you think of him, if you ever had experiences with him, or just how bad my videos are. Hey, it's a free world, I won't hold it against you. But I mean, hey, I really don't give a f